All right, so now that that's all hooked up, if we were to go to browse, we're actually still seeing the default page. A deployment hasn't been triggered just yet. Uh, so the way it works is it's using GitHub Actions. So if we click into our, I'm gonna call it main branch. I know they got the wrong name, but uh, we're gonna click into our GitHub workflows. And then below here, we can see we have a YAML file uh, and this is for GitHub Actions integration here. And so what it's doing is it's specifying the branch, uh, what how it's going to uh, build. It's gonna run on Ubuntu latest. The steps it's going to do, it's gonna check it out. It's going to set up the Python version. It's going to build it. It's going to do that stuff. And so in order for this to um, take action, we'd actually have to go ahead and make some kind of manual change, which we have yet to do so, eh? So what we'll do is we'll go back to our main here and uh, it should be as simple as uh, just changing something here. So it's not, I'm not sure how it's supposed to know that it's supposed to be doing the hello. And we, oh, I guess, yeah, sorry. So this means it's gonna route over to here. Um, so I'm just going to make any kind of change here. doesn't matter what it is, just one space. We'll go ahead and give it a commit. And um, if I go back to my latest commits, we should see that I made that change. There it is. We'll go back over here and this should be deploying. Um, so if we go over to logs, here you can see one's in progress right now, okay? And so that's what we're waiting. We're just gonna see that finish there. We could probably open the logs and, and get some more information there. And so it just brings you back over to GitHub Actions. And so here's GitHub Actions and it's performing the stuff here. So we're just gonna give it time here and I'll see you back in a moment. So we didn't have to wait too long. It only took one minute and 29 seconds. If we go back over here, um, we might need to do a refresh. And so we can see this is reflected over here. And so if we go back to, it doesn't really matter if we go to settings or logs here, but I'm gonna hit browse and see if my page is deployed. It still is not. So we do have a small little problem here and it's really gonna just have to do with how the app is served. So that's what we need to figure out next. All right, so our app is not currently working and uh, there's a few approaches we can take. And the thing I can think right away is we should go and SSH into that instance. If you scroll on down here from developer tools, you can go to SSH and click this button and that's gonna SSH you right into that machine right away. You can also uh, access SSH via the um, CLI command. So I believe it's like, it's like AZ web app, um, SSH, it'll do the exact same thing. You do that from the cloud shell, but that's not what we're doing today. If I give this an LS in here and we're in Linux, we can see we have our app here. And uh, what I would do is I would see what's running. So I'd, I would do a Puma, uh, or sorry, not Puma, <laughs> PS aux grep uh, Python. And you can notice that we have a G unicorn that's running. So that is where our Python instances are running. So you're not looking for Flask, you're looking for Python here. And if we wanted to make sure that was working, we just type in curl localhost. Um, and so that is gonna return a port 80. So that tells me that, cause like curl just means like, let's go look at that page. Um, it should return some HTML, like print out the HTML to us. So that means the app is not running. Um, so what you could do is run flask run and it's going to start on port 5,000, right? So what I can do is I can go up uh, back to my deployment center here and I'm gonna go get that link here and just ignore the fact that it's working. Uh, it's it's not working right now. I know for certain it's not, uh, but if we do 5,000, that won't resolve because port 5,000 isn't open. So we can't really just uh, put 5,000 in there and the default server here would be 5,000. So if I stop this and I specify port 80, right? then this will start up the app on port 80. And so now when you go here, okay, it will work. Uh, this is not a great way because uh, of course, as soon as you kill it here, uh, technically the site should stop running. Um, and so you'll run into that step. Uh, so what we need to do is provide a configuration to G Unicorn, which is a Python thing. Again, it's not so important that you know how, like what these things are, but the idea is that you understand as an administrator, you wanna make sure you have an app that runs after you do a deploy. And so in this particular one, we need a startup.txt. Uh, and interestingly enough, there is a uh, example code by the same author of the other one we were looking at here. I believe it's the same person, or it might not be, but uh, they have a startup.txt, right? And so in here, you can see that it binds on port 000, it starts up four workers, starts up the app. 
All right, um, and so that's something that we can go ahead and do. So uh, what I will do is I will go back to my GitHub repository that we have here, and I can just go ahead and add a new file. So I'm gonna say, um, add a file, create a new file here. We'll call it startup.txt. I'm going to copy this command here and paste it in there. So gunicorn will bind the workers and start up on the app. Um, startup app is being ran by uh, something here. So if I go back here, I think they have a startup pi here. And that's all that it is doing. Um, I think I want to, I could do it this way, I suppose. Let me just see here. There's just just slightly different, eh? So they actually have like a full app going on here. And I just want a very simple Flask app. So I think what I can do, let's put Flask run here. Port 80. And that should start up the app there. I'm gonna go ahead and commit that file. Okay. And as soon as I commit that, if I go back to my actions, it created that startup file there. So it should trigger a build. It's queued up. Um, and I'll just put this tab up here. So we'll be back here in two seconds. And if I give this a nice refresh, yeah, you can see it deploys in progress. So uh, this doesn't take too long. We'll just wait, close that there. We'll just we'll wait a few minutes. We click logs, it just opens it back up here and we'll see how that goes. All right, so uh, your deploy may have finished there, but the thing is, is that we're not gonna really know if uh, a change has taken effect unless we actually go ahead and update our code. So what I want you to do is go to your code tab, go to your app.py, we'll hit edit, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to Vulkan. And then we'll scroll on down, hit commit changes, and we'll make our way back over to our deployment center, and we'll give it a refresh here and we're just gonna wait until this one is complete and we will double check to make sure that that has changed. If it is not, we will take action to fix that, okay? All right, so we just waited a little while there for that deploy to happen. And if we go to our website here, it is taking effect. So that's all we had to do to get it working. So that's pretty good. Um, so that is uh, deployment.